The G Herbo situation, man, today. This just came out today that G Herbo is about to be charged by the FBI. Now, according to the Chicago Tribune, Herbo is named in a federal fraud case brought in by the state of Massachusetts, pretty much alleging that he, him, his music promoter, and other members of his crew used stolen identifications to charge more than $1 million worth of exotic services over a four-year period um yeah yeah now so 14 count indictment pretty much um and they're saying that herbo and his associates pretty much scam trips private jets limousine rides exotic car rentals and a vacation to a jamaica villa um crazy 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 man they got the feds on them and um, we're gonna have to see how this thing turns out um Right now, we always got to say here, everybody's presumed innocent yeah. first. I'm not yeah. trying to say anything like that, but once the feds are on you, they on you. Don't look good. What do you think about this, Sam? 1.5 million in fraud. Now, we know white folk in jail for fraud in the IRS. The IRS don't play. Like you said, that's nothing more than another extension off of the FBI. Yes, sir. Alphabet people. You know what I'm saying? So, this ain't no game. This ain't something that you can go get a high-priced lawyer and fight. We see the Fed's um, percentage and win record when they got their people and they want their people. They usually get their people. Um, all is being alleged right now. Hopefully, he can um, find his way out of this and, and be presumed innocent in that situation. But we've seen recently, and we'll talk about it throughout this podcast, that the Feds aren't playing. In particular, they ain't playing in hip hop, mm -hmm. and they seem to, to develop information. And when they get the information, they get enough information to be able to prove without a shadow of doubt in court of law that you are guilty. They bite. They bit G Herbo today. Now, is he currently in custody? Oh, God, do we know was where he's at or his whereabouts? No. Mm -hmm. Damn. All we know is we got the indictment. I mean, eventually he will be. Yeah, man. Hope, prayers out to G Herbo. Hopefully he can figure this out. But that is we've been hearing this a lot. You know, with the the um, the, the SS, the, 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 the loans and stuff they've been giving out for COVID oh, yeah, and the relief yeah. stuff. A lot of people have been finagging the system and doing little things. And I'm not comparing that to this situation, but we've seen this happen where people think they can get away with fraud and money with the IRS. And I would not suggest that being a career path for mm -hmm. anybody out there listening because that, that you're you going to lose. Yeah, it was actually this rapper who um, he was doing like an unemployment scam. I forget his name, but he actually had a song. He made, he was pretty much like showed like all the, uh, what he was doing was um, getting people um, that had to file unemployment. He was like, somehow he got the information and he filed for you know hundreds of people and he got them their million dollars back Damn. he had all these envelopes he was showing them off but i think the moral you know of the story is that once the feds come in you know that they got you hence the um 97 96 conviction rate that they got mm -hmm. is because they spend time watching you they spend time you know getting into your finances they spend time putting informants and shit like that around you to make sure that when they bring the case, you either going to plead out or if you dare fight us, we are going to lynch you. We're going to give you 30, 40 years. So it's, it's a small percentage of people that can actually beat them boys when they come in. So that's why when you see it, you know, you're like, damn, it don't look good. But again, presume innocent um, until we see the facts and everything. But yeah. we all know what the feds mean. Yeah, prayers out to G Herbo, man. Hopefully he can find his way through it and learn. Don't try to scam the feds. Yeah, crazy, man, definitely. But um, Sam, man, talk about the, um. you said Snoop Dogg got a boxing league that he's going to be um pretty much dropping. Yeah, Snoop Dogg's uh, fight league, I guess, is coming off the hills. Obviously, people were talking about his great commentary on the Tyson-Roy Jones card. Um, he was probably one of the highlights of the whole goddamn evening. There wasn't very good boxing going on, but listening to Snoop Dogg give commentary was damn funny now coming off the heels of that it says that um let me see where it says it says uh tmz sports reports that the self-made multimillionaire is launching his own professional boxing league alongside triller co-owner ryan cavanaugh now triller was the hosted event of the boxing event mm -hmm. that we saw on pay-per-view the uh, fight, it, it, uh, the boxing league, excuse me, is titled Fight Club. The league is already working on its first big event and plans to have Snoop provide his colorful fight commentary, wow. help book the fights, 
and gather musical acts. Now, um, it says this was the first event of the league that we have called Fight Club. Kavanaugh said during a video interview, it's a league owned by Proxima, which is parent company to Triller and Snoop. And this was the first of many events. This is going to be big. The whole idea is we want to change up the way boxing is done. Man. Um, no, let me say this. First off, I'm, I'm ha- I, I, like I said, Snoop was one of the highlights of the show. The boxing wasn't. I was not a fan necessarily of the music in between. Not not that the artist and not that the, the music wasn't dope. Mm-hmm. Because in a music setting, it would be dope to listen to. But when I'm listening to boxing, I felt like those interludes right. and they were fucking big interludes in my opinion it drowned it away from the boxing so when you mm-hmm. don't have solid boxing mixed with those interludes mm-hmm. it just lags the show and it was lagging the show in my opinion now when you got um our man nate robinson and jake paul jake paul that? yeah that fight was probably the most entertaining fight okay but it was a shit show that fight Man. wasn't good. Okay. Nate Robinson okay. obviously didn't know what he was doing. Salute to Nate Robinson for having the heart and the guts to go out in front of millions of people and even try the shit first off. Mm-hmm. Um, it seemed like Jake Paul had somewhat of some technical training, but he was sloppy too and getting smacked around. And I'm hearing that he's trying to fight McGregor. He would get absolutely oh, annihilated yeah. against Man. McGregor or anybody with some type of real skill mm-hmm. involved in this. Because although he's a very entertaining act and gets great views on YouTube and for some reason, was able to get on a real boxing car. I would salute to even being able to have the strength to do that. Uh, I, don't, I don't really see him as a serious boxer. The Roy Jones Tyson fight was really greatly hyped. I think that that shows mm-hmm. that legends never die because Tyson, obviously, that allure still wanted people to come in there and see him, but that was 104 years of age in the ring and it showed. Yeah, and I think, you know, what people are going to have to do is differentiate the two. Like, when you go to these events, you know, like this, like the one they're probably going to be doing, you're probably not going to get 100% like a Spence, you know, versus a Garcia type thing. You want to get, you know, the shit show thing. It's like, it's about, it's not even more so about the fight at that point. It should be. It's more about, you know, all right, this person ain't been in a ring. This person's a YouTube star. Let's put him in a ring. Oh, remember, remember that thing called Celebrity Boxing Match? Yeah, definitely. It's like, yeah, it's like yeah. this, that type of thing that... You know, and I think it's good that you said because it's, constru- it's constructive criticism from a customer. But I think that people are going to be just, you know, and they're, that's what they're feeding off. People just wanting to see, you know, the gladiator thing going the head to head thing. But then you're going to have your people say, like, I like that, but I want to see professional boxers. I think it's taken away from the sport. But, um, yeah, I think it's, you know, you don't get to be somebody like Snoop Dogg and be in this game for so long without, you know, knowing how to piggyback off of things. He took... The fact that he was trending and everybody was talking about how great of a commentator he is to launch in a business, I think that's dope as hell. Now, if they market it, old guy, because you made a great point in that regard to where this is just strictly entertainment, we're going to get your favorite YouTubers. We're going to get people that typically wouldn't get in the ring and we're going to get them in the ring. Maybe some rappers out here beefing. We get them in the ring as opposed to going out here and throwing gun violence and we promote that during the show. I think that's a phenomenal idea. But let me know what I'm watching. Don't promote it as serious, real boxing you can really train for the event and take it seriously yes but mm-hmm. you are not a real boxer you are not one of these brothers out here laying it on the line every day right when any one of these martial art uh, mma ufc fighters out here laying it on the line every day doing that for their profession let's separate the two but if they market yeah. it the way you did i right. think it's a fucking grand slam and a win and if snoop's commentating the joints it, like was, I said, he, was, it was he that funny. great at the joint though snoop it was entertaining it was entertaining okay could he really do a boxing event? No, but right. for, for doing what you saw, he was basically saying everything you were thinking out loud. So it was funny. I got you. You know what I'm saying? It was damn entertaining, man. Snoop did That's his thing. Up. Salute to Snoop. Oh, yeah, definitely, man. But yeah, man, um, shout out to that. I didn't get a chance. I was trying to, you know, I think order it. Oh, yeah. And it was just like, it took you through a lot of. That's one thing I'd be, you know, critical of. I was trying to order off that service. And it was just a lot of hoops he had to go through to order it. So um, I wish I would have had a box like you. <laughs> I pay, hey, I pay 25 a month, so I, I pay something, <laughs> goddammit. I pay for the service. Yeah, man, definitely, definitely. <laughs> but um, what do you think about this, though, man? Fat Joe said that he was offered $10 million.